Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. Hello everyone, this is Rob, and welcome to episode 114, 114. and uh, it's been a while since I had a chance to yak with you folks. A lot of interesting things in the old internet world. Uh, I got a kick out of, uh, well, I, I'm, well, I, you know me, I'm constantly getting a kick out of that Bob Wells dude. Uh, apparently he's got a new uh, non-profit organization where you can happily send your money to. And uh, uh, now, give him credit. I mean, <laughs> um, when he does videos and stuff like that, other than the times that he's trying to sell you something, uh, he does do some very fascinating uh, interviews and, and meet some interesting folks that are out and about living in a minimal, you know, minimalist life. And uh, and and it's good to see some folks that are maybe on fixed income and uh, trying to find a way to keep a roof over their heads and still have a community and so, you know, so forth. And <laughs> But still, uh, and then, oh my gosh, in the last couple of videos, I saw him dressed up like Moses or something. And it's like, oh, anyway, so uh, thumbs up on, on the good things he does and thumbs down on, on the fact that he's kind of, it's almost like a cult, I swear. But <laughs> anywhere, um, but there's a lot of good things too, and I'll 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 give him that. So anyway, um, I uh, I actually promised I was going to do a video after I got back from our RV, and um, you know, uh, for those of you uh, are new to listening to the show, we uh, keep our RV up in Central Oregon, and we live in Arizona. And uh, we're kind of leaving it there for two purposes. One is for affordable storage. And two, uh, it's up on five acres where Sherry's folks are up in age. And, and it's kind of nice to have that up there in case we need to shoot up there real quick. Um, driving time, I can be up there in two days. I could actually be there in one day if I drove like 20 hours. Uh, but I could fly right up, rent a car, and then I'd have a place comfortable to stay and and um you know it's familiar and uh it's holding up really well i don't necessarily like the idea of keeping an rv in one spot but when we were up there uh in september we actually moved it down to an rv park which is just down the road this is uh, on crooked river ranch and uh just went overnight flushed all the tanks kind of ran everything kind of it was a good chance to kind of roll the wheels, make sure everything's getting lubricated, and the, uh, the RV is running at 100%. And so I'm quite happy with that. And the ultimate goal is, you know, Sherry and I are just getting close to hitting the old 58 mark. And by the time, you know, we bought it and financed it. And by the time we retire, uh, our RV is paid for, and we love our, our Montana. And uh, when that happens, you know, that will reduce our overhead and uh, allow us to travel more. So, uh you know, we're not doing as many adventures right now, uh, other than, uh, you know, the fact that uh, we we actually have come out with a new product. So I thought I'd run my little commercial of our new product, the Ranger Rob Poopy Bags. Hello, I'm Ranger Rob. Do you love your spouse? Do you love your partner? Do you love your family? And do you love your pets? will show that love with Ranger Rob Poopy Bags. Our two-month supply and our wonderful high-quality box with a dispenser in the back will allow your partner, your friends, your family to be reminded of your love twice a day. Ranger Rob Poopy Bags come with handles. They're lemon-scented. They're very large and beat our competitors. If you really want to show your love, you would buy your partner and spouse, family and pets, Ranger Rob Poopy Bags. You can get them at Amazon and at RangerRobPoopyBags.com. Don't let your love go unnoticed. Ranger Rob Poopy Bags.
Okay, so yeah, so <laughs> our commercials are kind of lame, <laughs> but they're fun. So what got me to do the Ranger Rob poopy bags? Well, RVing. <laughs> and uh, when, uh, you know, we have a dog that's a good size, uh, Cinder. She's a chocolate lab. Um, I, you know, when you use the dog parks, they typically will have some dispensers there. And they've got those ones without handles. And and um, I, I don't know, I'm, they're okay, but... When you go to reverse them out, it's sometimes a challenge to keep from getting anything on your hands. And I've always loved the uh, handled ones, and you can find them occasionally. So when I did, I always bought a couple extra boxes because uh, um, I just I like the bags with handles. So what I did is I created my own bag, and I made them about one centimeter even bigger and deeper than even the people that I used to buy my bags from. And uh, I, they always used kind of an ugly army green, and we went with a blue. And uh, so we put together a really nice package of a, uh, um, of a poopy bag. And one of the reasons why I wanted to kind of bring this up is, you know, there's a lot of RVers are either under the retirement age and looking for things to do to make money. And so this show is to kind of give you an idea of something that you might have an idea about so i personally think there was a good niche for in the rv world at least and a lot of other things for a poopy bag that one is kind of rare and two i wanted one that was a little bigger and 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 just had a few quirks about it that i wanted to be better than what i used to buy and um and i wanted them to look good and cute and have a little fun with it and i wanted the price to be under ten dollars uh usually i ended up paying 11 to 14 dollars for a two months supply and if you go to amazon and by the way these are in amazon so you don't even have to go to our website which is rangerrobpoopybags.com just go to amazon type in ranger rob poopy bags and voila they're right there easy to get anyway these bags under ten dollars well under two dollars to ten dollars um, are eco-friendly by and they break down in landfills uh, they're lemon scented not real strong just lightly um, good size bags for you know some big dogs and small dogs it doesn't matter um, they're just nice and what I do is I grab like a couple out of the box and keep them in my back pocket um, and uh, I don't know they they're just great bags and they come in handy for all kinds of other things too when you're like taking a canopy off your truck or something you have a place to put your bolts and stuff like that or if you go for hikes and stuff and you find pine cones or some stuff you want to collect having those little bags in your back pocket are kind of convenient uh, we do have some other products coming we're actually going to have them put in rolls um, and then we'll have a little dispenser too so it's kind of a different version but uh, typically these are the ones in the box uh, that come with a two-month supply and they're cool but getting to the point of how does this uh, work with RVing well um, people are always looking for a way to subsidize either um, work you know being unre you know, not retired and making income and or being retired and want to up your Social Security a little bit now I gotta tell you every time uh, if anybody tells you to start a business or anything stuff you gotta have money to make money so you got to keep that in mind that you're going to be spending money up front. And so, anyway, we designed our product and we went through uh, um, Alibaba.com and uh, worked with some vendors in China, uh, which is very, very common. And if you do some research about selling on Amazon and selling on Shopify and stuff like that, you can find all this out and get some really good detailed education about it. So anyway, we I started contacting some folks, and I was find out there's companies that make a lot of these bags already. I just wanted to make mine more original. I, I actually decided I, I could have gone with something that was already designed. There's no patent on this stuff. And uh, so uh, I made my bag, a, you know, they do things in um, metrics over there. So I did about one centimeter larger and deeper and uh, I wanted a nice color so I went with a blue and I wanted kind of a cute little brand to it so we went with the Ranger Rob which is an old nickname of mine from years ago and we created the Ranger Rob poopy bag and uh, 
we wanted the cute name, so we used the word poopy. <laughs> anyway, uh, um, that's how they came about. And uh, we designed the box from scratch, the graphics we had done through Fiverr. And, um, you know, went through that process. And, of course, uh, all this stuff does cost money. You have to have it done. Um, I actually had one company make our first box, and they actually kind of failed. and had some pr printing issues and stuff, and I ended up having to find another company. So um, it's not, you know, the perfect industry. To, it has problems. So um, you have to kind of keep working with it and get trained and get used to working with vendors. Once you accomplish it, I've actually gotten through the hard part. I've got the boxes. I have my first small shipment sent to me and I proved the quality. And now I have another thousand or so coming um, uh, via ship. And we got our first quantities approved in, in Amazon. And uh, it's kind of exciting. Uh, and and anybody can do this. Um, and I guess what I'm saying is, we can be a source for you for asking questions. If you want to learn how to develop your own products, sell things, you know, you probably heard of, oh, people selling on Amazon all the time. Uh, we can be you know, more than happy to answer some of your questions uh, and uh, help get you started. We're not done with just the one product. We're actually doing, you know, our products on rolls too with a little fabric dispenser. And then there'll be another product after that of a smaller size without handles, which I not my favorite, but they'll go into even a smaller dispenser. And uh, uh, we'll you know go with that. But anyway, I really like the handles because when you go to put your hand and you grab your stuff and you go to reverse the bag out, the little handle kind of allows you to pull away from your hand and, and fold it over and then tie it into a knot. And that's why I like the handles. But the whole point of this whole thing is uh, it doesn't matter what age you are. You know, you guys, I've told you my age, I'm almost, almost, I'm pushing 58. Anybody can do this. And if you have an idea of something you like to create or something you've seen and you want to modify a little, and then of course there's the branding and, and I can get into that a little bit. I've trademarked Ranger Rob. And so I actually use LegalZoom to do so, and it costs money to do that too. But um, I hope you find this kind of stuff interesting uh, for the fact of is everybody's kind of always looking a way to be independent. And if you want to do this traveling and stuff like that, this is a great source because you can have your shipments. You can literally ship your stuff directly from China to Amazon and uh, control everything through Amazon. And uh, it's kind of interesting. Um, and uh, um, we're still learning. And there's lots of great training materials. There's even classes you could take, which, you know, uh, there's so much material and people putting out really good information that you really don't need to take seminars and classes and spend, you know, uh, large amounts of money on special seminars and stuff. You can learn all this stuff. Uh, YouTube is amazing. And uh, <laughs> so, yeah, so talking about YouTube, I want to kind of switch the subject over to something. So let's let's switch here. Now, I don't want you to laugh at me, <laughs> but I've always told you guys I'm Sherry's bitch. <laughs> And why is that? Because I'm retired and she's still working. So I've got to pick up the, the pace here at the house a little bit. And I can tell you one thing for sure I've really gotten into is cooking. Yes. And you guys have probably seen some of my videos on cooking and uh, especially on the Traeger, which is a Traeger pellet stoves. And uh, I really enjoy that. I mean, it's kind of new for me and, and uh, I've really actually gotten into the cooking and of course there's uh, you know uh, responsibilities of the household that I try to take care of also. But one of the things uh, well then the other thing you probably saw on outdoor travel channels we have a, a a playlist of also gardening here in Arizona, which is amazing because of the fact of we are planting in October, November which is just blows my mind um, because I'm from Washington and of course you're usually f finishing your gardening where we're just starting. So yeah, that's been interesting and, and of course growing stuff sometimes you get a surplus of stuff and of course I kept hearing about canning. Now you know 
I don't, most of us probably saw our mothers or grandmothers canning and some people still do it that are just, you know, traditional, but I have never canned in my entire life. And I got this thinking it'd be kind of fun to learn because you guys know I'm into prepping a little bit and, uh, no, not hardcore prepping the kind where your power or something like that's out for two, three weeks, maybe a month. Uh, it'd be really nice not to be caught off guard. So having a little bit of dried food and some canned goods and lots of water stored away is always a good idea, but also learning how to can. So just last week, we actually started watching, and, and the point of this whole thing is learning stuff on YouTube. So Sherry and I are famous for getting ideas and then getting on YouTube and learning how to do it. And that's how I learned how to do the Range Around Poopy Bags. Well, canning was the same way. Never canned in my life. So we started simple and we decided to can, um, make our own pickles or cucumbers. And so we actually <laughs> had a couple of pans that were all right. So it kind of did a makeshift thing. So we bought some jars and we bought um, a couple of things at Target to, you know, the little funnels and, and the things to pick up the, the jars. And we kind of learned the process of how to uh, boil them and uh, get, you know, put the uh, lids on and watch them seal. And never, 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 never did this kind of stuff ever. And, of course, that was grandma kind of stuff. Anyway, so by the time we're, uh, we get all this done, we just did this last weekend, we actually went and bought a bunch of cucumbers and put them in quarters, you know, just, and I bought a little uh, nice little thing at Bed and Bath to, that cuts up uh, vegetables a little bit easier than other stuff I have. Kicked out a whole bunch of those. I had a little jar full, and we bought uh, a case of the little small I think they're little pint size uh, jars and we stuffed those and put dill in them and put some seasonings and and we put whole uh, cucumbers in them uh, put whole um, garlic pieces in it and stuff and it was kind of fun we used a bay leaf in them too anyway so we actually tried one for the first time a day ago which have only been about a week uh, just to see how they tasted and oh my god they were delicious oh my gosh I was so proud of ourselves and I know that sounds like silly like why would you be all thrilled but we've never canned in our entire life and and, and all the stuff I'm talking about is stuff you can use in your RV and especially if you're trying to be independent and maybe store a little bit of extra food and you and you know if you're in a fifth wheel you got the room you can store stuff Anyway, but um, you can do this canning in your RV. Piece of cake, you guys know that. Um, and if you have an outdoor cooker and stuff, you could you know boil your waters or, or sanitize your jars outside. Um, uh, it's endless. But the thing is, is everything you want to learn is on the Internet, <laughs> on YouTube. I mean, uh, I know a lot of you guys watch YouTube just to see some of the shows, and, and it gets old and all that stuff. But if you're trying to learn something new, Dear Lord, I mean, it's like last year we learned how to do resin art, which is using resin and adding colors to it and making stuff like that. And uh, we learned all that on YouTube. We just, uh, and, and you'll see all kinds of versions, like making pickles and, and canning. Oh my gosh, there must be 20 different versions of it. So you just kind of go and say, you know, we like those kind of flavors. We like that technique and choose one. And then kind of find some commonality of all the different shows you watch. And by the end of the day, you're an <laughs> you're a semi expert on whatever you're trying to learn how to do. And I just find it amazing that if you know the internet is definitely becoming uh, a pain in the butt when it comes to social media. But I tell you, when it comes to YouTube and uh, knowledge videos and how to do and do it yourself kind of stuff, dear Lord, the YouTube is awesome for learning how to do stuff and if you got the time to sit down for an hour or two sit in front of your television with a smart television and just type in pickle on uh, pickling pickles uh cucumbers and it, it'll be endless videos endless videos and <laughs> it's amazing and of course when it came to gardening for sherry and i last year and trying to learn how to garden in arizona um you know of course we had to type up arizona gardening and learn 
when and how and people are doing their uh, sh- uh, I mean it was a shocker learning how to garden here in Arizona uh cuz the seasons are so different I mean I and it's you know all you do is drive a thousand miles and 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 north and and the whole world changes again but down here no 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 you actually get a lot you actually get, to me it seems like you get more growing time here in Arizona than I did when I lived up north and that's kind of amazing and I I, I just get a kick out of that <laughs> so yeah um the other thing I got a kick out of is uh well let's change the subject Line Screw One from Canada once again did a video that always gets me kind of going once while was is he did a show called <laughs> No Drama <laughs> kind of thing on RV and goes, I've been driving around for years, I've been doing this for years and years and years, and I've been I'm down here in California, I think he's in Oregon right at the time I did this, and I don't seem to have the drama all these other people are having. I mean, you know, he has we all had stuff like flat tires and uh, problems with a car, maybe a fuel filter or a fuel pump going out or something. But it wasn't like drama. It was like you just do what you have to do. And so uh, I just got a kick out of the fact that he was like, I don't know how these other people turn everything into, into such drama when it's just common living kind of things. And so if you really look at some of these videos and you go, would you react the same way or, or, or you know, uh, it seems like a lot of times they're not prepared. <laughs> it's, so it's kind of a, insane. And and um, uh, the other thing I was like, even with the Bob Wells and all that stuff, is uh, a lot of people see the stuff, and the, but actually don't see the drama, <laughs> which is uh, just the opposite. Is uh, you know the lifestyle of being a boondocker and living out and in, um, independently and stuff has its drawbacks. And uh, so you need to keep in mind if you're going to do that is, um, and I've mentioned this before is, you know, I feel responsible of if I get this hair up my nose <laughs> to go boondocking or live in a van and I'm toting my wife around and pets, I have a responsibility to make sure that I am safe about it and I don't put them in a situation that could cause a security issue and, uh, I really hope that some of these couples, at least the couples, of course, single women too, and and I'm sure there's all of them can hold their own, no doubt. Um, keep in mind that times are changing and things are getting kind of crazy out there, and so um, keep in mind that you know boondocking out in nowhere, you're limited to protection and help, and uh, you know try. I, one thing I do appreciate about the Bob Nation stuff is uh, the fact that. It, he does try to keep things as a community. And, uh, you know, at least when you're boondocking, maybe boondock with one, two, or three other people that are uh, of the same thoughts and ideas and uh, stick together a little bit and kind of watch after each other and still be independent. Uh, it just sounds like a smart thing to do, <laughs> in my, at least in my opinion. But... Who am I to, you know, dictate that we should be smart? So, but anyway, uh, yeah, amazing stuff. Um, <laughs> drama. And that's probably one of the problems I have. I just can't seem to come up with enough drama to do shows on drama. But I do constantly have things that are constantly going on right now that I think would benefit uh, folks um, especially that are trying to do RVing before retirement and trying to live that independent lifestyle. And I'm really hoping that maybe I motivated a few folks on the first part of this module when we're talking about uh, selling on Amazon and stuff. Because and, all the rest of them will tell you, well, I'm doing web design and, and others are doing uh, marketing. Well, that's a saturated business. And uh, uh, I can only wish I had the talent like Lanesker does. Um, that uh, what he you know what he does, but I, I believe he's retired too. But um, anyway, uh, uh, so you know a lot of these guys are out there, and they say, "Oh, we earn money by." Of course, they're trying to uh, monetize their YouTube channels, which can be really a pain nowadays. 
Um, we're lucky enough we got in in the early days. But uh, we have other channels that we've had for a while, and, and uh, the monetism is just, we can only hope. <laughs> but yeah, anyway. Um, but there's a lot of common sense business ideas. You know, those people out there that are making arts and crafts and they're selling stuff at um, uh, festivals and stuff like that, and that's awesome. Um, but, you know, if you still want to utilize the internet and stuff, try some of this Amazon stuff. Um, there's a lot, you know, uh, for example, uh, another thing I didn't talk about too much is we use Shopify now. And I have a, a Shopify at rangerrobshop.com, rangerrobshop.com, which you can go look at it. And we got some work to do. There's no doubt. But um, you can work with another company called uh, AliExpress. Uh, a l i express dot com, and you can literally create a company um, using drop shippers, so you don't have to have inventory. So my Shopify, I mean, besides I'm using Amazon too, but my Shopify's got my poopy bags in it. But I also can offer Amazon products through the affiliate program through the shop shopping cart, and I can do drop shipping on products that I'm. I like to push and so I need to sit down and refine my my shopping cart more and stuff but I got work to do on it and it's like but the thing is the point is everybody can do this yes there's a cost for the Shopify but it's worth it because anybody does a business you don't want to if you don't want to deal with merchant services use Shopify because merchant services is a nightmare. I'm telling you, I've had companies, I've had businesses and shops and stuff where we had to run credit cards and stuff like that. And it was a nightmare trying to figure out the math and trying to figure out the charges. And um, then they would hit you with fees and all stuff. Better to use Shopify and their program. Uh, let them do the merchant services for you. And yeah, they're going to take a a percentage of the business, but it's worth it. And uh, along with Amazon, uh, instead of having to deal with shipping and running to the uh, post office and to UPS, let um, and of course Amazon's going to take a chunk of change, thirty percent or better. Um, but uh, it's so worth it. Let them worry about the shipping. They got it ma mastered, and they do that Prime stuff. And and besides, if you're advertising in adver uh, Amazon. People that go to Amazon are there to buy stuff. So you automatically have got an audience or clients without having to do a bunch of marketing, which is another nightmare. So anyway, I hope this is good information for you. And uh, I, truly, uh, I truly think if you want to get into this stuff, you can certainly talk to me um, and shoot me a note through Facebook. <coughs> and I'll try to get you steer it in the right direction or I'll find a video that I really thought was educational and I can show you samples of what we did and I'm not saying that we're good at it um, but we're learning and you know I'm an, I'm an old guy learning new tricks <laughs> so I mean, a lot of us have to learn new tricks and so uh, I, anyway don't hesitate to notify us and send us you can even send me an email at rob at rvtalkradio.com uh, and uh, um, if I can help you out, great. I got a kick out of a video the other day. Of, uh, there's some new folks out there doing uh, uh, RV videos. Can't remember their name. But they were talking about the qualifications you may need to get into an RV park. And one of them was getting where they literally were asking for social security numbers to do a background test or check and literally did a credit report hard uh, hard hit against uh, the check your credit um, I would be I would have been so pissed off um, that it's just not cool but I certainly can understand it because you know uh, in the world of boondocking and RVers and stuff like that you got to remember that there are a lot of folks that either can't afford a home anymore or felons or folks that are maybe even um, sex predators and stuff like that can't rent homes and buy homes and stuff like that. So they, one of the alternatives they have, good, bad, or indifferent, is RVing in RV parks. And uh, so you can get some questionable people um, 
And, and some of them are trying to rebuild their lives. So I want to make sure that we're not saying that they're all evil. But you're going to get some characters. And so uh, depending on the RV parks and the locations close to cities or um, hopefully it's, these people are trying to live in homes and trying to earn a living too instead of getting into trouble. But, you know, they, uh, they're having problems out there. And so some RV parks are... You know, up in their security, up in their checks, doing background checks, especially for people that are going to be there for a long period of time. And then, of course, you're coming across RV parks that just don't give a crap and don't call you back or uh, mess up their reservations or they don't have the right software to control everything, um, aren't paying their employees um, very well, and, and so things aren't getting done or maintenance is not being kept up. Um, all the above is going on out there. And, and it's really important that these people that are doing these videos, that they are doing reviews on RV parks and, uh, you know, and, and letting you know whether a good thousand trails park is worth a hoot or if a private one's worth a hoot and ones you, you know, that they just didn't have a good, uh, oper you know, it just wasn't a good deal at all or it was really crusty. Or, uh, you know, just like getting, you know, uh, I would definitely try to constantly be flexible in the places you stay. Sometimes you don't have a choice. And when you get into the cities and stuff, sometimes you got to take whatever is available because it's getting so crowded out there. But uh, I just find it amazing that some folks are getting amazed that this is happening. But uh, if you really think about the situations out there. Uh, I can certainly understand it too on the business side of things of getting some shady characters um, and and a lot of I just like Eagle View over here by my place I noticed they put a uh, security gate in because they literally get people driving in late at night finding an open spot parking sleeping the night getting up early and leaving not paying or registering anything just coming in the RV park and using it where you know everybody else is paying and uh uh, literally that was becoming a problem over in Eagle View and I noticed that they're trying to address that and yeah so it's interesting stuff um, I, I just I find it amazing that times are definitely changing I don't recall having half of these problems back the first time when Sherry and I full-time back in 2006 um, and uh, and you think by now the internet would improve in some of these places, but no. Uh, of course, you know, there's cost involved and they're afraid to raise their rates. And, and we actually do web design for a couple of webs, uh, uh, RV parks and uh, can't help but notice that it seems like once a year I'm constantly raising their rates. And so, uh, uh, you know, I'm sure taxes and... and uh, costs and stuff like that or maybe trying to pay their employees better um, and then dealing with seasonal business too uh, all those are factors of whether they can be good RV parks or not and so the prices are going up but the good part right now is gas prices are down in the winter yay <laughs> what a nice thing to come across so uh, I'm seeing that uh, uh, diesel, I think, is going to be under three bucks pretty soon here down here in Arizona, and that's a good thing. And uh, I hope that uh, helps out a lot of folks that are especially got the big diesel pushers. Uh, nothing makes you want to cry more than having to fill up the tank in a diesel pusher, or even even the regular gas ones. <laughs> Put tears in your eyes, and there's no doubt. Ford's RV Refrigeration Training Center, a licensed school, has many objectives for only one product, the RV refrigerator. We educate others so they can provide a repair service in their area, repair their own refrigerator, or when they hear throw it away, buy a new one, they'll know the right questions to ask in order to know whether or not their technician has been properly educated. Since 1984, we have saved RV owners money, provided them the best warranty, and reduced our carbon footprint. We accomplish these objectives daily through our service and training programs. Military veterans can even use their GI Bill for our training program, which includes our customized tools and manuals. Visit RVRefrigeration.com to find free DIY repair videos and information on our service and training programs. As a thanks to Rob Scribner, 
we're offering his listeners a free 11-point RV refrigerator inspection and one free night of camping at our location in Benton, Kentucky. Go to RVRefrigeration.com to call and make an appointment. That's RVRefrigeration.com. Thanks for listening. Stay cool and GBYAY. Well, this is the time we also remind you that you can listen to RV Talk Radio on Good Talk Radio, which is our full-time 24 um, 24-7 radio station, and we uh, play RV Talk Radio twice a week on weekends at 5 p.m. Uh, Saturdays and Sundays. <laughs> I had to think about that a little bit. So, <laughs> and uh, of course, you can listen to the podcast. Uh, just use podcast software, type in RV Talk Radio, you'll find us no problem. But if you like to listen to our radio station, we are syndicated uh, twice, like I said, at 5 p.m. Saturdays and Sundays on Good Talk Radio, which is all part of the Cutting Edge Radio Network, which is another thing that if you ever want to get into in the future. Uh, Podcasts have abilities to allow you to possibly earn some income and things like that but it's a hard industry to really make any money in um and we do it because it's fun um not the overhead isn't too bad and uh we can be creative and do things and advertise products and stuff like that too and we syndicate shows from all over the world and it's amazing um uh, good talk radio gosh we've got all kinds of great shows uh uh, from Christian conservative to cr- wild and crazy to uh, we have one kid that's he's almost 13 years old that uh, does a weekly show and he does a uh, kid rated kind of show and, and, and it's a fun radio show and his, he's called off the record. He does a uh, we let him play twice a week uh, twice on the weekend on Saturdays and Sundays. I don't remember what time you have to go look at the schedule but just go to goodtalkradio.com Hit the button that says, you know, check the schedule of, of all of our shows and you'll find great talk, great talk shows. We do have music time. We have great DJs. We have uh, uh, game reviews for people who are in, in, in the gamings on Sunday nights. Um, gosh, this is everything. All kinds of great stuff. But of course, uh, Arizona Talk Radio, which is ours and also um, RV Talk Radio is syndicated there. And you can catch all of our old episodes. And uh, gosh, we got a lot of them. <laughs> Tons of episodes. And uh, uh, yeah. And then we have a show called She Said, He Said that we used to do. Quite a few episodes of those. Paradigm Chimes is ours. Plus there's, I bet you we syndicate 30, 40 shows. Ron Edwards, we have him. Um, Kyler Davenport, he has a talk show in the evenings. Uh, Joe Messino, gosh, all kinds of stuff. And we have a um, Up North Journal for uh, uh, camp uh, for camping, hunting, and uh, we also have uh, uh, stuff for outdoors. And we're just now working on a show for pets. We have a nutrition show. We have a doctor psychologist show. Oh my gosh, there's all kinds of stuff. Go check them out. Good talk radio. Good stuff. Welcome, everyone, to the Ranger Rob No Poopy Scoopy Therapy Group. Yay! Hi, here. Cool. Now, I know all of you guys are guilty of not picking up after your dog. Yeah. Yeah. Stinky. 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 Well, this is the Ranger Rob Poopy Bag. It's lemon scented, it's large, and has handles. Oh, oh this is so, so easy. Easy. Wow. You can get a two month supply for under $10. This makes picking up after your dog easy. Just go to rangerrobpoopybags.com. That's rangerrobpoopybags.com. They're also available on Amazon. So group, you've all graduated. Get out there and pick up your poop. Visit rangerrobpoopybags.com. That's rangerrobpoopybags.com. And don't ever get caught not picking up after your dog. Yeah, well, you got to have a sense of humor a little bit for your commercials. <laughs> Not to mention, by the way, uh, by, if you go to good um, uh, Facebook and go to RV Talk Radio, we now have cups, 
RV Talk Radio cups. They're really nice cups. They're affordable. You can get the regular size or the mug size, the big ones. Um, they're not very expensive. And if you go to Facebook and scroll down, you'll find them there. Or you can go to rangerrobshop.com, go to our printed uh, printed products under mugs and find find the Good Talk Radio. Not Good Talk Radio. <laughs> RV Talk Radio uh, cup right there, and they're really nice looking. They're really, really nice, and uh, they're really uh, affordable. They're not very expensive, and we're pretty happy about those. And uh, uh, we also have uh, sectors in there for RV products, and uh, you'll see us kick them on onto the Facebook page occasionally. But, uh, yeah, we, uh, we got our cups now. Pretty cool. But I was going to mention, we also made... <laughs> uh ranger rob poop <laughs> poopy bag cups and so there's something that's funny about drinking out of a poopy bag cup uh, anyway just uh, and of course we have hats and uh so you can get uh rv talk radio hats they're affordable and nice looking hats and you can also get cups and uh, of course the poopy bags too i'm, I'm actually wearing my <laughs> ranger rob poopy hat poopy <laughs> poopy bag hat i love it when people go what does your hat say it's ranger rob poopy bags <laughs> anyway so i hope you get the gist of ideas of what i'm trying to get across on this show is uh, ways to earn income and ideas and i'm hoping it kind of uh, stimulating your your minds for ideas um you know you could be a person that also follows all of the different uh art shows or product shows or swap meets and stuff like that and maybe you make products maybe you do some kind of art some uh, jewelry or something like that and that's a great way to go around and make extra income and still have the freedom that you're looking for to travel and uh, uh just like the stuff with the amazon and stuff you can be out of the country just say you're visiting mexico or maybe you're going to new zealand and stuff like that you can still monitor your business <clears throat> using amazon and, and coordinate a lot of things without physically having to be there so uh yeah um pretty amazing stuff i i hope that's been hope you know helpful to everybody on the show today well i also wanted to take the time to talk about prepping a little bit um even if you're an RVer, and and, and reason we, we actually did some videos when we we're doing full time travel of a few things you might want to consider because oh my gosh, um, there's a lot of stuff going on and boy, I mean, can, can you imagine what it'd be like in California? And uh, if you're like in California and you're able to grab your RV and get out of Dodge before the, your house burnt down or something like that. Wouldn't it have been nice that if those people had some uh, things in those RVs ready to go? For example, if you go to Amazon and purchase some of their dried foods that are in the buckets, and they can cost between $59 to 100 they can be hundreds of dollars, depending. And maybe get one to two weeks worth of, of food that all you have to do is add water. And uh, uh, they're not that big. I mean, and you can fit you know, uh, two weeks worth of dried food in your RV um, quite easily. And, and even the smaller RVs, you'd probably be able to squeeze some of those packages and stuff and get the ones where you just have to add water. So, you know, I, I never, I mean, a lot of people use their RVs just for weekend warriors and things like that. And like Sherry and I, we use it because we're kind of watching her parent, you know, her kid. <laughs> her mom and dad, her kids, yeah. Um, and uh, we always keep a week's worth of um, emergency uh, food in there in case, uh, you know, we have a power outage, or we have something really weird happen, like look what happened in fires. Uh, even if your house didn't get burned down and you're around those fire areas, your power is out. Um, you may be without uh, uh, power or even... Um, uh, gas or anything like that for weeks and weeks and weeks and so you're going to be living kind of boondocking right in your own place and uh and then other people you know when the, they had to abandon their houses sometimes you know, a lot of them grabbed their rvs and uh took off with that and got into a safe place and that's what they're living in uh, other people just living in tents and stuff where having a little emergency supply in the back of your car 
would make a lot of sense too. Safety stuff along with at least 72 hours worth of food and water. And so I'm urging you guys to take the time and this isn't the apocalypse kind of thing. This is the kind of common sense stuff that if you're in a high region where there may be volcanoes, it could be tsunamis, there could be fires, uh, there could be earthquakes, stuff like that. To not at least have a week's worth of food and water is just ridiculous because you, can you just imagine what it could be like if you don't have those things because the stores will be out of stuff the same very day. I mean, people will just empty out a store. And if their power is out and stuff, there's not going to be no milk. There's not going to be any meat. It's all going to spoil the whole work. It's going to be really sad. So to have all these dry goods, which is no example, no, no reason not to go look on Amazon, look for dried foods or uh, uh, one week's uh, survival packages and stuff like that. Um, and maybe a water filter too. So, um, you know, getting a good water filter where you could actually take uh, water from a lake and literally run it through a filtering, filtering and maybe boil it too. And by God, you know, you, you would have some safe water to drink in case, you know, uh, of course, it'd always be nice if you kept watering your tanks. But if you're like me, I empty my tanks and it could be, you know, uh, cold season and stuff. You don't want to be keeping water. You may be all winterized and you can't keep water in your tanks. But if you have to bug out really quick in your RV um, and, uh, you know, uh, of course, if you get out of the region where the trouble is, you shouldn't have any trouble getting water. But I don't know. It just seems like it's uh, constantly preaching. And, and I, I and it's not just you. Uh, I notice with my own kids, I'm going, are you prepared at all? And, of course, uh, I, I'm a little bit more of a prepper. I'm one of those that you should have at least a month or better. Um, and I, I talk about all aspects of it. You probably saw us do some videos on shooting. Uh, making sure that you're armed, you have ammunition, make sure that you have water. And in our case, since we live in a house, we buy those two and a half um, uh, gallon jugs each time we go to the grocery store. So we don't have to buy it all at once, buy a little bit. And at the grocery store, by the way, there's tons of stuff that if you don't want to buy the freeze dried stuff, there's tons of stuff where you just have to add a little water and, and then sometimes butter as an option. And not to mention, by the way, I was telling you early in the show about something I wanted to learn how to do. I made my own butter last weekend. I couldn't believe it. I saw someone making it. It's like, I want to learn how to make that. So I bought this whole milk. And you just, it's so easy. You just uh, take, a, we have one of those really good blenders. And we blended the heck out of it. And pretty soon it starts getting uh, separating. And, and then you add salt to your taste. And... Uh, before you know it, um, you, you kind of work the liquid out of it. And before you know it, you have butter. And it's like the greatest tasting butter you've ever had. And you can, you know, salt it to your uh, desire. And uh, so, uh, once again, I was <laughs> learning that on YouTube. <laughs> but I'm learning how to do things that, um, you know, and having a garden, I'm going to have extra food and stuff like that. So, me, I was learning how to can is being helpful. But uh, I can assure you that I have extra tuna fish, extra canned uh, uh, chicken, um, chicken in a can, and I got all kinds of noodles, and I stored some extra sugar, some extra um, uh, breakfast stuff, um, uh, a sweetener like honey that lasts forever, just little things like that. And then I make sure I have a whole bunch of those little propane canisters. I buy a new one from the grocery store every time I go grocery shopping, that and water. And I'm, I've am i got a good, um, I keep a Coleman stove. So heating, um, if you have property, uh, then you could probably burn, uh, make a little uh, rocket stove or something in your backyard. But um, in my case, I'm going to try to use a Coleman stove as, as long as I possibly can. And so I use those little green canister propanes. So I just buy one every two weeks or so and, and, and make sure I have what I feel will be well over a month's worth of propane canisters to be able to heat up water and boil food. Because everything, even the food I have sitting aside besides uh, some veggies, I have in canned veggies, I have some canned little things and stuff, but... All of it requires being heated, uh, but you could eat some of it cold. Um, I wanted a stove that I could use that 
uh, Coleman stoves are pretty efficient and uh, uh, use a little green canisters. I'd love to have some of the big ones, but in this case, it's like they're easy to store and they're not that expensive. You can get the little canisters for as low as five. I've seen them as low as four ninety nine, but five ninety nine seems to be common. Grocery stores they're up to seven ninety nine. It's not the best investment, but to me, it's like uh, um, I'd rather just buy one or two or three a month and make sure I have a good supply of little green canisters at my household so I can heat up water and boil water. And uh, I also have, I don't know if you've heard of these things, but I bought one of these things where you, you can put this little plastic bag in your, if, you, if the power goes out and say it's, it could be a while, but you need water and you're still getting water, um, but it, that could stop, is you can fill up a 55-gallon plastic container in your bathtub from your water faucet, and then I bought some additive, which is the same stuff we use in our RV tanks, to uh, uh, treat the water and make sure it's safe, and you can literally store 55 gallons of good walk and drinking water in your bathtub in this really nice little tank thing, and it was under, I think, 12 bucks for the little kit. Um, pretty cool and then also I have a little solar thing to charge up my cell phones and stuff so at least we could try to listen to anything that might be uh, worthwhile on cell phones or maybe your cell phones are still working but there's still things on the cell phone that are helpful even if you, your phone doesn't work and then last but not least make sure you have a, a AM FM radio that has solar or a little crank on it to uh, listen to uh, any emergency broadcasting or weather conditions and stuff. And we're talking about, you know, there's places like Texas when they got hit by a, a hurricane or Florida, all this stuff. Those guys are out of power and may not even be able to drive around with trees and stuff in the roads and stuff. You could go a couple of days or a couple of weeks without power and stuff and you'll be a hurting puppy. And so, uh, you know, uh, and depending where you're living, make sure you have a little spare clothing and and be able to stay warm and a little protection because after a while, people start getting a little nutty. And uh, so being able to protect yourself because uh, if in a, in a long term, if it was a long term kind of thing, it isn't what you own anymore is what you can hold on to. <laughs> and so uh, everything that we own, cars, houses, all that would be irrelevant as uh, the, it goes from ownership to what can you hold on to? What can you hold on to that can't be taken away? Uh, because people are going to get desperate. But in the meantime, if it's only a one or two weeks scenario, make the best of it. Have a little firewood if you have a house. Be ready. Have some candles. Have a few basics. Make sure you have some spare water. And if you have a source like a swimming pool like we have, Get yourself a really good uh, one of those uh, tin, they're about $200 for a good one, that you can actually uh, filter that water and turn it into good drinking water. I also figured my pool water would be good for continuing to uh, give my plants water. Um, but eventually even the water in the pool would be no good. But uh, anyway, uh, things to think about. I don't think it's anything wrong with being prepared and I'm not talking about survival. Of course, a lot of you people might think like some of the people I know is like, I don't know if I want to live if, if things are that bad. But uh, it's it's an it's an instinct. All of us want to have a survival thing. But uh, you know, and I still think <laughs> just between you and I, I'd love to see the internet go down for like a month. <laughs> it, not for me so much. It'll drive me crazy. But for our kids, our kids. I've learned, you know, uh, one of the things I was watching a report on is kids are learning, of lost the the thought of empathy um, because they they just can't comprehend that face to face kind of stuff, and I think the social media has kind of uh, hurt us and stuff. So it's important to us grandparents and stuff to keep our grandkids, like when the grandkids come here, uh, games and stuff like that are not very. Uh, welcomed here because we just don't have them and so the kids have to learn how to you know talk to us and, 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 and do things with us and learn how to do stuff and, and play in the swimming pool and, and realize that whole life isn't 
electronics and social media. And so, yeah, boy, I feel really, I feel, I'm so glad I'm not a parent <laughs> anymore. Luckily, my kids became adults just before Facebook and all that stuff fired up. I remember when my kids were teenagers, we did get the little flip phones, and so we did have phones, but it was nothing like what our kids have to go through now. I feel so sorry for the parents. I really do. But uh, um, anyway, a lot of the stuff we're talking about is relevant to RVing and, and having a little bit of uh, survival gear, a little extra food, stuff like that uh, in case there's an emergency. Uh, RVs are great because, I mean, if you have propane and stuff or uh, uh, you, know, you have a lot of stuff that will allow you to be com pretty comfortable during hard times when uh, utilities are down. And so, yeah, you have quite the advantage. And uh, anyway, but anyway, uh, the other thing I just wanted to make sure is uh, uh, if you have any questions about some of the things I talked about with Shopify or uh, Amazon.com of uh, selling your own product or developing a product, um, you, I, I'm happy to share what I learned. And I'm still learning, but I should certainly get you off to a good start. And, and certainly, if you can do it better than me, <laughs> power to you. I'm happy for you. But uh, I do need to scoot here. We're running out of time. But I want to thank you very much. I'm sorry we haven't had a lot of uh, episodes out. Uh, just no drama. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, guys, be safe out there. Buy yourself an RV. Hit the, Be a weekend warrior. Have something for emergencies. And if you can get out there and start traveling before you retire, power to you. And, um, you know, if you have to buy a van and... Go hang out with Bob Wells. <laughs> Go for it. Anyway, guys, thank you for listening. Till next time, I'm Rob Scribner. This is RV Talk Radio. Be safe. Bye now. Hey, thank you so much for listening to RV Talk Radio. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world and listen to our podcast. Be safe. Until next time, bye now. <laughs>